Hello and welcome back to our schizophrenia topic um, and having looked at one biological explanation of schizophrenia the dopamine hypothesis we're now going to look at, it, at an individual differences one the psychodynamic approach and uh, as we know the word psychodynamic is about the uh, an interest in the different forces that are going on within a person's mind then this explanation is going to be telling us that schizophrenia is just the result of the way various forces within within someone's mind actually work uh, work together and interact with them okay so in the lesson you should be able by the end of the lesson you should be able to describe the uh, psychodynamic explanation of schizophrenia and you should have the sort of understanding that would enable you to apply this explanation to a novel scenario in an exam situation okay so tasks to complete um, uh, in the resources section you will be you will have seen on on my post um, a handout on the psychodynamic approach there's also um, a summary sheet to be done so you need to uh, complete the AO1 section of that um, and then there's a, a 10 mark essay um, which is this one and there, there's a, um, a deadline in classroom for you okay so I'm really going to try and keep this to as near 15 minutes as possible but there's quite a lot of material so I'm going to see how we get on okay so first thing is that is a psychodynamic approach um, this as we know is Sigmund Freud um, yeah uh, we've, we've discussed um, a lot about Freud and we've seen, we've got the uh, the doll in the in the drawer as we know okay so um, Let's see what what can you remember just looking looking at the next slide see what you can remember from memory you can maybe jot some of that on the handout you can start filling the handout um, in as well at the same time um, so these are all key ideas um, that uh, that are part of the uh, of the psychodynamic uh, approach so it's just you can pull, pro I'd probably pause the um, the video for a moment and and go back over maybe have a look at your notes from last year have a look at, at the textbook from last year just to remind yourself of those particularly it would be good to think about um, look at ego defense mechanisms and just remind yourself of what those are okay and then um, doing that you can fill in the box using all those um, those principles on the on the uh, on the page of the different psychodynamic ideas see if you can get your own possible theory of schizophrenia okay so i wouldn't if i were you i would pause it now and uh, and think about how you how maybe you think the psychodynamic approach would explain schizophrenia okay so just a, a few notes um for it never actually worked or treated a schizophrenic um, and it wasn't actually called schizophrenia at the time it was called um, dementia precox okay and, and for, but Freud really interested in everything when you look at the amount of stuff that he wrote and, and all the rest of it he was just fascinated in life and even though he'd never met anyone with schizophrenia he actually read um, a diary or a memoir of a man called Daniel Paul Schreiber who was a, a schizophrenic and he came up with some some ideas about how he could explain um, schizophrenia and two of the ideas two of the, the most important ideas and these are ones um, they're, they're headings in the textbook and they're, they're also headings in the summary sheet so it's really important for you to get these ideas down um, fixation and um, regression so just uh, look back on what we are what uh, fixation actually means what regression actually means and just again you can probably pause it and fill those two things in there so as we as you will have uh, as you will recall fixation is is what happens at one of the psychosexual stages where someone has been uh, got over either had very harsh treatment or very lax treatment so for example at the oral stage the libido is uh, focused on the mouth and if uh, if someone is breastfed too much for one reason then that would that's one 
reason they might get stuck at that stage or if they're not fed enough at that state at that stage that's another reason why they might get uh, stuck or fixated on that stage okay um regression um is actually when an individual goes back from one stage of, of psychosexual state uh, development to another because of a result of stress so if they if they're finding it too hard to cope um in one stage they tend to tend to regress um and they tend to regress back to the stage that they've been fixated at so um by doing by doing that um they know we no longer have to face the problems of of the stage that we're at okay so those thoughts that might be causing us anxiety um are pushed into the unconscious um, but that is not and it's not the same as repression Re repression is about um repression is about burying traumatic events and, and thoughts and feelings in the unconscious but this is about going backwards yeah it's, so it's the opposite of progress progress is to go forwards regress is to go backwards okay so according to freud during the um during the oral stage the libido, libido is focused on the mouth and oral pressure pressure, pressure. so adults can uh, get oral satisfaction um, in lots of ways no brain kissing smoking chewing gum eating all of those kind of things um but uh, according to freud someone with schizophrenia has been fixated at that stage and if they've been if someone is fixated at the oral stage and then they experience an awful lot of stress in their life um they might regress back to the the oral stage and function um and become basically like a, a baby again because as we know at the oral stage the only part of the of the personality that's present is the id so so I just imagine if someone has gone back from um uh from being a, an adult and and has, has gone back to an oral stage where the only bit of the personality is the id that's left how do you think that person might behave And what do we know? So we know that the uh, the mind of infant is all id. There's no ego or superego, and the the id is completely self-centered. The baby just when the baby's hungry, it cries. It doesn't worry about how tired its mother is or any other problems it might be causing. All it's interested in is their own gratification, what they want, but um, no care for other people. So as an uh, um, as a, an adult they would be we would see similar kind of things going on they'd be narcissistic which means that they're only focused on themselves impulsive they would do things without thinking about other people um, they wouldn't be able to plan their actions because they haven't got an ego and they wouldn't be able to see if their behavior was moral or not because they didn't have a super ego so that's that would be um and as a result of, of those things and especially the lack of the ego um the person would be likely to lose contact with reality it's hard to stay in contact with reality re with reality if you haven't got an ego if you don't see if you don't understand yourself in a way so schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder and so freud's trying to explain that by this regression process by going back to being um like a baby um the person has lost contact with what reality is really like So they go back to the newborn state focused on the self and this is interesting so they they become they disengage from reality and they're focused inwards so they're not really concerned about what's going on in the outside world and that is gonna that is that's gonna be part of the problem so um we've got this cut off from reality on the one hand but the person has still got um, an adult active mind so it's, it's not like going completely back to being a baby it's like um just having the id from the baby stage but having a mind and so um so what you're going to have is inside the mind um you've got these forces working together then so you've got the id on the one hand and then you've got this this active mind adult mind working but that's not but it's but still trying to create some kind of reality for itself 
So what happens, according to Freud, is that the, the adult mind creates this alternative reality that's not like, that's not like the world, but it has to be something. Um, and because there's no ego, the, um, the mind of, a, of someone with schizophrenia can um, be self-obsessed. It can be narcissistic. It may only be interested in itself. It might have delusions of grandeur. So people with schizophrenia often describe themselves as, um, uh, see themselves as a reincarnation of um, Gandhi or Jesus or Napoleon or whatever. Um, and so that, and so that is the that's the mind that's being cut off by stress from reality, creating its own kind of reality to try and make up for what it's losing by not being in, in touch with the real world. So, um, so by trying by creating this alternative world, they're trying to get back to some sort of normality. They're not in touch with the real world, so they try to create this sort of fantasy or imaginary world as a way of getting back to normal. Um, but the trouble, another part of the problem is that even though they want to interact with the external world or something outside themselves, because of um, because they don't trust what's going on outside them, um, they end up creating um, other things. So they end up hearing hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there, for example. And McGlashan, 2009, describes that in a way like um, phantom limb syndrome. Because in, so someone with phantom limbs, even if they've got, uh, even if they've actually had a part of their leg removed, um, the mind still creates um, the, the sense that there is a there is a leg there um, in the same way with someone with psychosis even though they can't because they can't get in touch with the real world they create an alternative world for themselves I'm just going to pause the recording for a moment and so using your handout and using um, the textbook, see if you can actually sort of put the, the process of schizophrenia in order. So what actually happens in order for someone to become um, or develop schizophrenia. Another um, possible explanation, another psychodynamic explanation for, um, for schizophrenia is known as the schizophrenogenic mother. Uh, absolutely brilliant Scrabble word. Although you need quite a lot of letters with me. Anyway, um, so schizophrenogenic. Uh, this this was um, an idea put forward by Frieda from Reichmann, who wasn't um, who was interested in Freudian ideas, but she developed some of her own, some of her own. So she she started off believing everything that Freud um, taught, but then came up with her own ideas. So she, she's what is known as a neo-Freudian or a new Freudian, if you like. Um, and from her idea, she said that the, the reason or the blame, in fact, that for schizophrenia comes from mothers. And she said that, that there are certain types of mothers who, um, who cause schizophrenia. So you might want to pause and think about that for a minute. How might bad parenting cause schizophrenia. So um, there were some studies, not an awful lot, but there were some studies that suggested that the mother and child relationship wasn't working with and, uh, and, that, and that could lead to schizophrenia. And the theory goes like this. It says that mothers who were um, overly dominant, so who kind of frustrated their child and didn't let their child, suffocated their child almost um, indoors, um, were part of the problem. So even though they were, so while they were being really protective and weren't allowing their children to grow emotionally, on the one hand, they weren't they weren't particularly warm, or so they were cold and distant. They, so they didn't pr provide any warmth. Um, so you've got two things going on. So you've got the, because the child's overprotective, they can't grow. And because the, the parent, the mother is also distant and cold, then the child hasn't, hasn't got any emotional security. Um, 
so both of those things so here are another couple of forces that are going on in the child's mind um, that leads to schizophrenia and she and so and from Reichman actually named gave gave the name schizophrenogenic to the to mothers who did this so it's um, schizophrenia causing mothers okay okay so um, so what you need to do then is complete your uh, complete the handout on those pages so that you, fu you fully understand Freud's theory alongside um, from Reichman's explanation of the schizophrenogenic mother okay i will see you on the next video